And finally, Miss B, a young woman who was abandoned at birth and picked up by a couple who treated her badly, beating and starving her into submission, first as a domestic slave and later selling her to an elderly man who kept her prisoner in a dark room for two years in the hope that she would bear him a male child. She knew nothing about the sexual act and how babies are conceived and born. She became pregnant but miscarried and underwent a painful surgical procedure without an anaesthetic. Following the abortive pregnancy, the man began ill-treating her, beating and starving her. In desperation, she jumped from a high window, not knowing what lay below. She ran for hours with an injured leg from the fall, and while sheltering under a roof, begging for food, was taken in by a woman who was a follower of a secret church. The woman sheltered her, but became worried when it was known that a group of men had beaten up her adopted parents demanding her whereabouts. The woman helped Miss B to come to the UK. On arrival, she did not know what England was. She had no idea of the world and the countries within it. For a long time, she had visions of killing her adopted parents, and her outbursts would be accompanied by shouts and screams and attempts to bang her head on the table. Her body would demonstrate violent and wild movements as if fighting with her oppressors. Again, we have a young woman whose presentation is that of a child who believes that during the night she can hear the voices of her adopted parents. Her voice, mannerisms, and bodily expression are those of the child. She does not know how old she is. All she knows is that a day comes when she can eat cake. She's now devoted to her sessions and to the recognition and respect she receives when she enters the foundation. The work continues and she's recently been able to grieve appropriately for her lost childhood. I would like to be a baby being wheeled in a pram by my real mother is something she says frequently. She was first seen by me in June 2008. An interim letter was sent to her legal representative in March. 2009, and a completed report, comprehensive report, was sent to her legal representative in May 2010, approximately two years after her arrival, her referral, I beg your pardon. Now, the examples that I cite illustrate the challenges that we face in providing a report, both in terms of time constraints and translating what we have understood and observed over time of the inner world of seriously traumatized and vulnerable people. The language of terminology that accompanies medical legal reports, essential as this is for establishing certain facts, may not be fully understood by non-clinical professionals. This results in a limited understanding of the impact and manifestations of trauma. Witnessing a panic attack or an episode of dissociation, extreme manifestations of anger and grief, sitting with a person in the consulting room who has lost everything and everyone and whose violated body is despised and rejected requires a language and expertise to explain the enormity of what we see and what we hear. Thank you.